Good day folks, welcome to MB Wildman channel. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make one of the greatest uh, raccoon baits that you can make. Um, this is the bait that I always make. It's my go-to bait if someone tells me they've tried everything before. So if you've got some raccoons, especially if you're doing ADC work or nuisance wildlife work, you know, and you've got raccoons that, you know, they, you've already tried the, 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 the paste bait that I've got on the channel already for raccoons and it didn't seem to work and you've already tried sardines and you've already tried whatever else, marshmallow, you've already tried everything that your neighbor or your trapper buddy told you to do. Uh, and the raccoons still aren't uh, still aren't cooperating. You're still not catching them. I'm going to share with you just in a minute that bait and uh, how to make it. And I'm going to show you first, though, how effective it is. Listen, if you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, we sure would appreciate it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. It's totally free. Just uh, just hit subscribe and uh, turn on that bell if you want to get notified when we upload new content. Wouldn't want you to miss any videos if you're interested in what we're doing here. And uh, so anyway, I got a call. Uh, from a buddy of mine who runs uh, a bit of an auction place and he's got raccoon issues. So he's got a family of raccoons moved in and, and then it looks like they've had little ones and they're all over the place. Um, some of the stuff that he auctions is, is like a surplus in some of its food and some of its all kinds of, of stuff. So there's lots around for them to eat. He's got a couple of live traps uh, and hasn't had much success. He said, I've tried fish bait, I've tried sardines, I've tried this, I've tried that. Said he did catch one, right, the first night, I think. Uh, and then since then, hasn't been able to catch any. So he's having a real problem with them. So I went up yesterday um, and I set uh, five traps, right? So I set his two and three of mine and I set them with this special bait that I made before I went. Again, like I said, this is my go-to bait if, if nothing else has worked. So I'm just headed there now to give them a check. And I will bet you that out of five traps, if I don't have two of these hard to catch raccoons, I will be shocked. Um, I might even have more than that. So hang on and uh, I'll show you what we get if we catch anything or not. And then I'll show you how to make this bait. It's super easy, super simple and super cheap. So uh, and if anybody knows, that's me, super cheap, right? So anyway, uh, stick with me. Now well, there's the first one. Yeah, okay, one there. Yeah, there's another one there. He sounds super happy. Yeah. Okay, so there's two so far. All right, there's the third one. All right, so so far we're three for three on my bait. Okay, nothing here. And nothing here. Okay, so three out of five though, not too shabby. Okay, so for uh, a spot where everything's been tried and couldn't catch anything, I got three traps full in one night out of five with my special bait. So check it out. Uh, I'm gonna go deal with these guys. Then I'm gonna show you how to make up this bait. It's a great one. So here we go, this is pretty quick and easy. Uh, nothing super spectacular, no, it, no ingredients uh, that you can't find at your local dollar store, grocery store, whatever for this mix. And like I said before, this is a mix I would not use in dog proofs, um, but I love it in pail sets and I love it in little like Petri dishes in, uh, in live traps. So like the, the, um, the cage type ones. So uh, anyway, this is uh, what you're gonna need. You're gonna need uh, some water, uh, you're going to need some vanilla extract, you're going to need some flour, you're going to need some sodium bicarbonate, which is just baking soda, uh, you're going to need a few marshmallows, uh, and you're going to need a large package of cherry Kool-Aid. Okay, so once you have all your ingredients gathered together, uh, we start out pretty simple. You've got one of, one of the big packs of cherry Kool-Aid from the dollar store or wherever. This is the one that makes like the five gallon bucket of, uh, of cherry Kool-Aid, you know, if you're having a big party or whatever. So... I use this stuff quite a bit because I can concentrate it. Now, I used to buy or get, you're gonna put the whole pack in. Sorry, I'm, in, I'm ahead of myself. Uh, put the whole package of cherry Kool-Aid in, in your, whatever you're gonna make this in, okay? And then you're done with that. I used to get a product like this, and if you can find this, this works really well too. This is purity cherry flavored syrup. Okay, now I can't buy that on the shelf uh, anywhere here that I know of, um, 
But if you can, that works very well and it takes out the step of the water and the cherry Kool-Aid. Uh, but I think the Kool-Aid is a lot cheaper because that package was a dollar, right? You then want to add your water to your Kool-Aid and I like to do about, you know, depending on how much of this stuff I want to make, about three cups, four cups is fine. Um, way, way, way less water than you actually need to make that much Kool-Aid, right? Um, you're gonna need a spoon. Spoon. So, add your water, add that whole pack of Kool-Aid, give it a little bit of a stir, make sure that your Kool-Aid is um, dissolving in your mixture. And what you're gonna end up with, after those two steps even, is um, a really concentrated cherry flavor uh, and a really, really, really red, red, red liquid. So basically, you know, it's a, a cherry flavored concentrate at this point, okay? Next up, you are going to want to add in about half a cup of vanilla extract. Now, it doesn't have to be exact. I don't measure this. I just like go, oh, there's about oh, half a cup, right? So half a cup of vanilla extract goes into my mixture. And I do mix it up between each ingredient. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary, if it just saves me time on the back end, but anyway. So there you go with that. All mixed in. Next, you wanna have about a cup of sodium bicarbonate or just baking soda. Now, I call it sodium bicarbonate because I buy it in bulk at the feed store and that's what's written on the label. But if you just wanna use baking soda from like Arm & Hammer baking soda, it works just, just as well. Okay, so you're gonna put the whole cup of that and it's going to fizz. Okay, so it's, you gotta stir it because this is what's gonna happen to it. You see it all fizzing up like that? A word of caution, if you're using a container that you don't have a lot of space in, you wanna add your baking soda a little bit at a time because it does fizz up. And as you can see that time I tried to catch it, but I got a little bit that, that spilled over here onto the, onto the tray. So um, you wanna add it a little bit at a time if, but if you've got lots of room and you don't like, and it bubbles up and you can stir it down, that's fine. What you'll find at this point is that a lot of the, the baking soda will dissolve, but you're gonna start to get a thick, goopy type stuff in the bottom, and that's exactly what you want, that's perfect. Okay, so stir up your baking soda. You've now got three ingredients in there. And the next thing you're gonna wanna do is just add uh, some mini marshmallows. Now, you can use big marshmallows, but I find that big marshmallows just kinda get in the way, they're too bulky. So I just add mini marshmallows, and you don't have to add a ton of these. It's just, you know, a couple or three handfuls uh, into your mixture as such, okay? So it doesn't have to be a lot. Um, that was just a little tiny bit you saw left in that bag. Uh, a bag this size, like a regular size marshmallow bag, would probably do half a dozen of these batches or more, right? So it just depends on on how much marshmallow you wanna put in. Give those a little stir. They'll float to the top of your mixture, as you can see, right? So they float. Um, and all you wanna do is just mix them up until they're coated uh, with the red, the red sauce that we're making, okay? Good. And your last step is uh, one that has to be kinda up to you and depending on the thickness that you want this mixture, I add flour, regular flour. Uh, I add it a little bit at a time. And each time I add it, I give it a good stir and mix around. And what this does is this will thicken this mixture and it'll turn into more of like a paste bait than a liquid bait. I like it very thick. So I end up using about a cup, a little more than a cup sometimes of flour in my mixtures. And now, it, I don't know how much of this you wanna make at once. It depends on how many chops you're gonna run and what you're gonna do. Uh, I generally don't make a lot of it at once. So it doesn't take a lot of ingredients and, and all of those things. But if you wanna make more of this, if you wanted to run this on your trap line or you needed to bait 20 sets or whatever it was that you were gonna you know, make. Um, actually, this would bait way more than 20, but you can just add more water, a couple packs of Kool-Aid, and double up on the ingredients. Uh, what you're just gonna notice is that the more of it that you make, 
uh, the more liquid that you put in there, then the more flour that you're gonna need to thicken it up into the consistency that you wanna get it in the end. Here's what you've got in the end, uh, or at least here's what I've got. Now, I've added the flour that I like to use. Um, this is what you end up with right here, a good, thick mixture. Now, I wouldn't go any thinner than this. This is kind of the consistency that I like to be at. You can go thicker if you want, like if you want your mixture to be a little more solid, you just simply add a little more flour but this is kind of where I like to be. When you're done, what you end up with is an absolutely incredible intense cherry and vanilla flavor um, with the marshmallows in there to give it some substance, right? Something that the raccoon can grab onto or see uh, so it's not just a blob of, of, of uh, like paste. Uh, there's actually something that they can see that, that, that's food. Um, and this works, I guarantee this works. Uh, I don't make a whole lot of guarantees, but I can tell you that, uh, like I said, I just caught three raccoons in five traps in one night uh, at a location where a guy's had traps set for a week uh, or two and couldn't catch anything. So anyway, listen, I hope this is something something that can help you out. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, shoot those into the, into the comment section down below. And uh, as always, happy hunting from the MB Wildman channel.